Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. Well, today I finally got Circus Convoy. Um, this was sent to me from Audacity Games and uh, I can't wait to open it. Um, yeah, I've been waiting a while for this. Um, I know it's, uh, I, I'm in Canada, so shipping from, from the States usually does take some time. And so I can't wait to get into this. All right, so what do we got here? Gift enclosed. Free gift enclosed, all as a thank you for being one of the first supporters of Audacity Games. So, I'm gonna open that up. So we got, um, I got the Audacity patch. Really nice, really nice work on this, like nice picture and everything. It's got the, uh, the, the dude up there, I think it's Andre, who is the character for um, the Circus Convoy. And then down below, it looks like it's Casey from Casey's Gold, uh, which is the other game that's coming out um, from Dan Kitchen that actually made that one. Uh, this one's made by Gary Kitchen and um, and by David Crane. So that's the letter you get. It just, uh, to a valued game reviewer and independent journalist. So that's really cool. Let's get to the game here. Uh, nice bubble wrap. Circus Convoy. This is the uh, collector's edition. So it's a nice um, gold box. Okay, so it took a little bit to get that bubble wrap off, but uh, it's off now. So let's see what we got here. We got the game here, and we got this uh, card thing here. Just going to open that up. I think this is the uh, authenticity. Yep, Circus Convoy, Certificate of Authenticity, number 0129. Cool. And it's signed by David Crane and, da and Gary Kitchen. So that's, uh, that's obviously hand signed there. That's cool that they actually hand sign it. And so this is to, this is to uh, pretty much um, authorize this as a the collector's edition and it's got the same sticker of authorization or um yeah i guess that's what you call it right there so that actually matches the authenticity this now this would be a cool thing to actually get framed um it looks nice and everything so i don't know i don't know how i'm going to keep this i don't know if i'm going to keep it like this or if i'm going to uh you know I don't know. I, I almost don't want to open this. This is so great. It's like, you know, when was the last time you actually had a sealed, like, brand new off-the-shelf Atari game? Like, I don't even remember. I would, I would have been a kid. No, maybe a teenager. Maybe a teenager in the in the 90s when, when they started selling the uh, Atari games again. Uh, that's when I got, um, that's when I got, uh, what's it, Keystone Capers. One of my most favorite games on the system. And that also was made by uh, Gary Kitchen, who uh, worked with this game. So these are like the two, uh, two, two of the greatest Atari developers uh, working together on one game. Oh, all right. Damaging the box. That's, uh, that's not good. All right. Uh, see the cartridge? Oh, look at that. Nice and shiny. Um, yeah, a little bit different than, uh, than a typical Activision cartridge. Um, they make these cartridges themselves. Uh, actually, they, they went through the, the process of creating their own molds so they can actually make their own cartridges, their own boards inside. This is not reusing hardware. Um, and one thing about this is it's not homebrew. And that's the, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I know in the beginning I was, I was considering it homebrew myself, but this isn't homebrew. This is made by an actual company uh from the people who made activision uh the the original you know people who were uh, in activision so let's see here where there's the circus convoy uh manual really nice paper too really good job and in fact you know i've been watching a few uh of their uh you know videos where they talk to other youtubers and um they said that they're only going to put like 100% quality in this. They're not going to skimp out. You're not going to get uh, those cheapy paper manuals that, that you would have gotten, say, in, like, 1983 when the video game crash was happening and manuals were starting to get black and white and cheap. 
like they are they are going all out and they are putting in some pretty good stuff in here uh this is a this is a warranty or something this was inside the manual it's a uh, warrants to the original purchaser of this video game cartridge that it will be free from defects in materials uh, and workmanship for a period of 90 days so you get a 90 day warranty that's pretty good and uh yeah so it's all nice full color there's Casey's Gold. I can't wait to play that one. This was uh, originally Gold Rush and um, or Dan Kitchen's Gold Rush. And I've talked, I had an actual conversation, a, a live chat with Dan Kitchen a while back. And we, we did talk about this game. And I was so excited because it's a sequel. Or, it, well, originally it was, it was supposed to be a sequel to Keystone Capers. Um, but, of course, he didn't have the rights to, to name it Keystone Capers. Look at these beautiful pictures inside. And so um, they, he ended up changing it to, uh, you know, Gold Rush instead of Keystone Capers 2. And then um, now it's called Casey's Go Gold now that he's joined up with Audacity Games with his brother and David Crane. So this is really cool. Um, again. And there's another thing that's interesting. They're, they are incorporating 2020 technology in an Atari game with QR codes. I mean, QR codes go back more, obviously, earlier than 2020. Um, they've been around for a while now since cell phones became uh, the norm. Um, but the idea that you have a QR code in an Atari game is insane. And uh, again, I remember watching, um, I, I don't know which video it was, maybe it was with John Hancock, um, where his interview with them, and they said that, he said that it was a nightmare coding this thing because uh, you know, this is not technology that you would expect to see on an Atari 2600, but it's there. So basically what you do is you take a picture, um, instead of in the past when you would take a picture of the screen to prove that you got a high score and then send them the photo, you actually use the QR codes. Um, you, you register your game. Also, you could use the QR code to hit to get some tips and hints and stuff. It'll send you to some pages with some information. So that's really cool. I mean, that's like, you know, they're not only are they pushing the limits of the Atari uh, with this game, there's a screenshot of the game, but they're also incorporating modern stuff into this game, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do a little bit of gameplay just because it's fun to do some gameplay. Uh, just so in case you haven't seen it yet, I know I'm a little bit late to the party with this one. It did take a little bit of time for me to get this. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to still do some gameplay footage and um, kind of explain a, a little bit what's going on, not to throw too many spoilers out in case you're still waiting for your copy or you've never played it yet, because uh, this game is very, <laughs> there's a lot going on. It's a huge game. Anyways, let's get to the gameplay. Okay, so we got Circus Convoy booted up. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. I, I like how you could see the, the keys on the keyboard moving and, and just that little bit of detail that they've put into this game. It's, it's so amazing. Uh, I mean, you don't, you, you wouldn't expect to see that from a game back in the early 80s uh, because, you know, they, they just didn't have the space to create these things. Um, and, okay, so there's our, our QR code if you need to register it, um, like I explained. So let's get to playing the game. So you're the chameleon. You appear in this game as Andre the Magnificent. Then you could play as other alter egos in future games. So right there, that tells you that they're planning on doing future games. So there you go. And you can see up at the top there, you got some text that's, you know, it's not just static text, it's actually moving text. Like they went through a lot of, uh, you know, detail. And so as you can see, you're running off these, these uh, train cars and you're collecting items. Um, the stars are something you're supposed to collect, and uh, I think you have to get, uh, oh geez, now I can't remember how many. Uh, there's a certain amount it, it tells you that you're supposed to get in the manual. So you can see I'm picking up all this stuff, so I got a parachute. Uh, you know, having a menu screen like that is impressive as well. And I got a bomb, and uh, so essentially what you gotta do is you gotta figure out on each area what the little items do and how to get through to the next, um, you know, convoy, I guess you're going to call it, line of trucks. And so, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much what this game is. It's, it's an adventure-style game, almost like platformer-style. 
and it's really just figuring it out. And I frankly, it took me a while just to get this far in the game. I was just like, I kept running into like, where do I go from here? Uh, you can see you come here, and I, I was stuck here. I'm like, how do I, <laughs> where do I go from here? And um, so yeah, the, the fun of this game is just trying to unlock what everything does. Uh, of course, they're not going to tell you in the manual, but they do have some tips and tricks, uh, apparently with the uh, QR codes as well. So in case you do get stuck, you can you can go and look at some of their tips and tricks. Because they're not just going to simply say in the manual what everything does and where to put it, because that wouldn't be fun. But um, yeah, so I, I figured out you got to put the bricks there, and then that allows you to get over to here. It's like a gas can. Whoa. Now here's where it gets cool. You actually uh, select your parachute, and now you can jump. And of course it only goes the one way. That's the infamous skull. I've seen a lot of people say they, they usually die on that skull, and, and that's uh, happened with me a few times. There's a magic, uh, magical hat with a bunny. Um, I think this thing appears in the Gold Rush game too. In fact, it, it's kind of funny that it seems like a few elements of this game are, are also in Gold Rush. So I'm going to be, uh, or sorry, C Casey's Gold. It's, it's no longer called Gold Rush. Uh, Casey's Gold. Now here's a, here's a really cool feature as well. This is the, the giraffe. I mean, look at the detail on that. And you can see when you jump on him, his head just starts to bounce down. <laughs> and I, I, at first, when I first played this, I just jumped over him and just kept going. And then one, one time I was playing, I, I accidentally hit him and I went, oh. And there you go. So that's just an example of the type of stuff you need to figure out in this game. Just by trial and error. There's the teeth. I think those are, what is that, Jawbreaker or something like that? It's one of those games that has teeth in it. I just flick a switch. And uh, so that's Duck Shoot. And that's the other thing about this game is there's mini games inside these, these rate, uh, train cars. So as you find a way to get through there, um, get in there, you could do another game inside the game. There's even one that, that kind of resembles the pitfall level. I think I have to go up this way. Got another bomb. Whoa. This, you got, whoa. Uh oh. Oh no. Not good at the sliding. I think I, I, last time I just jumped at the right time to, whoa, whoa, land on the, this is interesting here. Um, this will probably be a spoiler for some people, but I accidentally figured this out. <laughs> Here's the pitfall scene. Oh no! And you can see it, it has the pitfall sound, which was really cool. Just all of a sudden now, the sound effects are the pitfall sounds. So this is, puts puts me under the um, underneath the uh, the game. So normally you would you would end up above there where those crocodiles are. So I don't know what's happening when I'm getting these gold bars, but something's happening. I, I don't know if this is just an extra thing. But you can hear that that's Pitfall Harry's jump. <laughs> they just incorporated that. And it, whoa! Okay, I didn't do this before either, so even as I'm doing this, I just learned how to get that green key. <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, this game is going to be a lot of fun. Anyways, yeah, I just wanted to play a little bit, just in case you haven't seen it yet. Uh, this game has been out for a little bit now. People are starting to get their copies in the mail, and um, I'm sure there's a lot more people that are planning on buying, picking, a, picking up a copy. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, this, I've been having a lot of fun with this game. Uh, it's huge. I've heard it takes about half an hour, once you fully understand what you're doing, to complete the game. Um, and at that point, then it's just speed runs to see if you could get it done faster. Um, I'll be surprised if I could even figure out the whole thing without having to watch somebody on YouTube, <laughs> you know, do the whole tutorial on it. Because you got to do a lot of figuring out in this game. Uh, anyways, yeah, it's just, it's really cool. I love the fact that Atari is back in 2021. And, uh, you know, hopefully they can make a whole bunch of new games and, and just keep going on this stuff. Because, frankly, they're doing it for us. They're doing it for the fans. Uh, they're not going to make a ton of money doing this. And they know that. Anyways, 
I'm going to leave a link down below to their website if you want to go and check it out, if you want to order one of these. Um, I don't know about the collector's editions anymore. I don't know if they sold out of them, if they're going to do another batch of them. Uh, but the regular editions, it's, a, it's supposed to be unlimited, um, and it comes in a green box. So you'll be able to get that, and um, it's really cool. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.